see it. Because like I said, yeah. I've been here a dozen times, <laughs> Daryl, and every time we just see so much fog in the area. So this is pretty incredible. And we're perfectly situated for it here on just the mouth of the Santa Inez River, spilling into the Pacific Ocean. It is an incredible view. We are blessed indeed. It is so beautiful. Now there are teams on opposite ends of the world working on this mission. The satellite will be controlled from the European Space Agency's Operations Center in Darmstadt, Germany. Yeah, and here at Vandenberg uh, Air Force Base, SpaceX's launch team is working the countdown from their control room. While NASA's launch services program, it you see right there, is at the Mission Directors Center just a few miles away. Now, shortly after Sentinel-6, Michael Freilich is launched. It will start gathering a lot of data about our oceans around the world. And that data will be collected by high-tech instruments on board the satellite. NASA's research scientist, Ben Hamlington, explains how. From an early age, I saw images of the Earth from above. And you just realize how much is going on in the ocean, the variability that's there, the changes that are occurring. It really became a passion of mine to understand what's happening in the ocean. So sea level rise is really interesting because the impacts are local, but it's a global problem. So I've done a lot of work looking at sea level rise in particular locations, but on much broader scales and with the satellites, we have this global view. So here we can see the satellites orbiting the Earth and where they are right now. Having overlap between the different missions allows us to make a direct comparison. And it's really the information we gain from all of these satellites that tell us about sea level change and allow us to get an understanding of what's happening on an entire climate system. And that really long record that'll exceed 30 years with the Sentinel-6 satellite allows us to have a better understanding of how the Earth's climate is changing. So this is an animation of the Sentinel-6 spacecraft and uh, how it collects information about the, the sea surface. And you can see the radar pulse that's bounced off the surface of the ocean. It measures the time it takes for that pulse to get back. And from that, we can pull out the uh, measurement of sea surface height. It's not just scientific curiosity. It really impacts the daily lives of people and their ability to plan for their future. As I started to live in coastal areas and, and see flooding that was occurring, I got to see firsthand the effects of sea level rise and climate change you start to realize the importance of understanding what sea level is doing now. We can use that understanding to know what sea level might be doing in the future. You can hear a call for RP-1 full in just a second. And then we'll be looking for the strong back retract to take place in just a few seconds. Propellant tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. Perfect. So what that's going to look like on your screen is up near the top of that rocket where the fairing is, uh, just beneath the bottom edge of that fairing. You can see that on screen there very well. There's a clamp that's wrapped around the second stage of the Falcon. That clamp will expand, and then that tower, the strong back or transporter erector, will tilt back just a couple degrees in preparation for the final minutes of countdown. It will still be connected. There's that call, the retract has started. Uh, that, that strong back provides power, fluids, and communication for the rocket up until the time of liftoff when it will tilt back even further away from the rocket. So keep your eyes on that. Uh, but Philip, I wanted to have you tell us about the, the path for today's flight. The folks along the, the southern coast of California might get a treat if they're outside looking up to the sky. Right. I'm definitely happy for the people out there in Southern California because, you know, we get a million launches out here, but, you know, if they can finally LD, see some, you know, especially at JPL because it's, you LD. know, they're invested in this launch. That so Vandenberg is really convenient Michael for Freilich. these high inclination launches. So oh, Sentinel-6, Michael Freilich has a 66 degree inclination, which means that it's perfect for the Falcon 9 to launch south-southeast. And it's really going to kind of ride along the coast of Central and South America on its way up to that 1300 kilometer altitude. Yeah, very good. We just heard there Tim Dunn uh, coming on, on the nets and giving his official go. So NASA is go for flight here. Uh, the last few minutes here, we're going to see, we're going to hear a number of calls with closing out um, liquid oxygen or locks. Uh, and then we'll kind of tick down here to the final minutes where we'll hear uh, we're commanded for final pre-launch. Uh, we'll have the, the automated flight termination system will be configured for launch. We'll get a final go from the launch director at around 45 seconds to go uh, on the way to zero there, right on time for this instantaneous window at uh, 12, 17, 08 Eastern time. That's 9, 17, 08 there on the ground. Uh, so Philip, really fast here as we're waiting for the liftoff. Tell us about the rocket here. We, you kind of told us about the flight path, but uh, what is this rocket capable of? There's a lot going on here. Right, complete. there's a lot going on, and we have some beautiful views of this Falcon 9. So you can see it's a two-stage rocket. The first stage, or the booster, goes about two-thirds of the way up, and that actually provides 1.7 million pounds of thrust, which is going to you know get the, the vehicle and the spacecraft off of the pad. 
The second stage, its engines or its engine is housed in that black interstage region that's just below the five meter fairing. And that's what's going to finally bring the spacecraft up into its orbit. And as we've discussed already, that first stage, once it separates from the second stage, is going to head on back to Vandenberg. Awesome. So, so much coming up here. Uh, Post liftoff is certainly active as well. Uh, about a minute into flight, we'll hear calls for flight through max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. Uh, and then we'll, strong about two and a half. Strong rack retract has been completed. There you go. Uh, you can see a nice separation there between the rocket and that transporter erector. About two and a half minutes into flight, we're expecting to see a few things happen very rapidly. We're going to see that booster separate uh, after that first stage engine cutoff happens. Uh, and then after that separation takes place, the second stage. Stage two locks load is complete. There's that stage two liquid oxygen load complete, which is great. Uh, you kind of see some of the steam coming off the vehicle. That's f uh, dealing with cryogenic fluid that's on the order of negative 330 degrees Fahrenheit. It's densified liquid oxygen mixing with the uh, started. the ambient temperature there, which creates that, that fog, that steam effect. Uh, so uh, w um, we'll also see a lot more happening post liftoff, so stay with us. And we even have a, a lot uh, very, very late in, into the show today. Uh, we're roughly an hour and a half of milestones past liftoff of getting into the correct orbit and confirming that we have a good, healthy spacecraft. Um, so please stay with us. There's a ton going on, but we'll let you listen in these last minute and just enjoy the countdown. Falcon 9 is in startup. Launch director is go for launch and landing. You may notice some water beginning to flood the pad here. That's very seconds. intentional. Uh, that's actually a sound suppression system that, that occurs to allow uh, the, the sound of the, vibra the vibration of the sound to actually be suppressed. And it also helps with some cooling as well. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. T-minus 15. 10. 9. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. 0. And liftoff of Sentinel-6, Michael Freilich, continuing a legacy of ocean observation and international collaboration to benefit all humanity. M1D propulsion is nominal. <laughs> M1D propulsion is nominal. So there we heard that call for max Q. We also heard vehicle is supersonic, meaning it's traveling faster than the speed of sound. A beautiful shot there from the first stage looking down towards Earth and seeing the, the plume there created by those nine Merlin 1D engines. Beautiful clear skies there from Vandenberg on the ground, able to track with that rocket as you see it on screen now. 
Just a reminder, coming up here very quickly, we're going to hear booster, or first stage engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. Booster separation is there, visible on screen now. Beautiful shot. There's the backflip, as Jesse mentioned, beginning with the, the Falcon booster. Stage one, boost that burner started. And that second engine looks like it has lit. You can start to see the engine bell there turning uh, an Both orange. Vehicles are following nominal trajectory. Fairing separation confirmed. And there goes the fairing. That's exposed. That is Sentinel-6, Michael Freilich, there on your screen. That is the satellite that has been exposed now because the fairings have been jettisoned and separated. And you just saw it there tumbling away. Some beautiful shots on the way to orbit. And stage one, boost back burn shut down. So we're getting reverse angle views of that engine on screen. That's what you're seeing. Uh, this is switching between opposite ends, opposite sides of that second Both stage. Vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectory. And that term nominal being used, uh, we've heard that a lot during this call out. Uh, the, that's a very good sign. Nominal just means that everything is going according to plan with, within the expectation of operation for the vehicle. So we are, oh, there, a great shot from the first stage. Uh, you can see the hypersonic grid fins there that are expanded, um, those honeycomb-shaped structures. As the booster begins to enter the atmosphere, those will be able to help guide and stabilize the booster to make sure that we hit that pinpoint landing like we heard that question asked. Uh, how do we ensure pinpoint landing? And those grid fins play a huge part in that. That second stage is in the middle of its first burn. Uh, this burn will last uh, approximately six and a half minutes. And then there will be a long coast phase today. And then we will have a very short, uh, or a relatively short, second stage, second burn to put us in the correct orbit to follow that, that path of the Jason series, as we heard earlier. So, Philip, from a trajectory perspective, is this just kind of a, a moment where uh, does do the people working this mission do they kind of just sit and wait as well here? Because obviously we're not controlling this actively; it's just the vehicle, in theory, just doing what it's programmed to do. Right. I mean, I will say I didn't personally work this mission, so I'm not sure what my coworker who worked it for the sure, past couple of years sure. is thinking. But it's beautiful to watch this trajectory that we've been planning out for years. We know what the math looks like. We know what the numbers are. But actually seeing these views from the second stage is just amazing. Yeah, very good. Uh, and we'll talk more about kind of your role and what you do as a, a trajectory analyst. Uh, you are, by all accounts, a rocket scientist, which is pretty cool. Um, we will come back and t chat more in a bit. Uh, well, again, we'll revisit you once we get towards that second stage, second bird. Uh, but for now, I think we're ready to head back out to, to check in with Daryl uh, and Jesse to hopefully enjoy nominal trajectories. what I would expect to be a beautiful, uh, very noisy uh, nominal landing of that booster. Uh, Daryl, how was launch? How did it look out there? All right, we're going to hang off. They're not quite ready yet. Uh, I, I'm sure they're just enjoying it. They probably got up uh, to watch that launch, and they're probably getting positioned again. So uh, I don't blame them. Uh, Me neither. <laughs> yeah, they should definitely soak it in. <laughs> So that uh, second stage uh, Merlin vacuum engine, uh, MVAC as we like to call it, uh, that produces around 210,000 pounds of thrust once it's on orbit uh, in the vacuum of space. Go on, entry burn has started. All right, so call for the entry burn there. I think Daryl and Marina are ready for us. They should be there with Jesse to talk us through the landing. Uh, how was launch? <laughs> Oh. oh my goodness. It was incredible. <laughs> it was incredible. It That's was, why we're late. We're all, we're, I'm was, <laughs> we just we're all talking at the same time. It's great. <laughs> I mean, can, can you tell that we were excited? We were standing oh, there. We saw it. It was so down. clear we could see the separation as it was going the entire time. Jesse, I mean, isn't that awesome? Awe inspiring. My mind is blown. <laughs> so it's going to be landing right, right behind, behind us, mm -hmm. and we've got a view now of the actual booster coming back. Um, 
It's got its grid fins out, and that's helpful. That's yeah. It has to use those things. Yep, it has to help steer it um, as it's making its way back to land. So it's the steering mechanism. It's, it's really interesting that it lands right next to the launch pad. We have a little tent over top of us, so we're not going to see that first boost back. Burn. But we have a clear shot of uh, it coming down onto the pad. The other thing we're wait, uh, waiting for, and we're making sure that we keep track of, stage is one, the engine started. cutoff of stage, um, stage two. And we're going to call that out. Here it comes. There it is. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Coming in at an angle oh my God. and just straightening out. What do you think, Jesse? That's amazing. Oh my goodness, I might cry right now. <laughs> so incredible. Every time I see this, it's just slowing down so perfectly. Look Perfect. Just hovering. Oh. There's the sonic booms we talked about and touchdown. Oh my we heard God. that. Oh, that was yes. And Falcon 9 has landed at LZ4, landing operators proceed to 11.100 on recovery to right now. For those that are familiar with rocketry, they kind of are accustomed to science missions and robotic explorers having a, a coast phase that can be fairly lengthy. But why this 45-minute coast before the second burn? So with the rocket, we bring all the gas with us. There's not gas stations in the way. So we want to try and use as little as possible. And so just the way that it works is that, um, you know, we start hey, Callie, in, um, I want to jump we, in there for we fly a second. up just in the early say, parts to a We're looking at the spacecraft separation right now. Um, I want to let you finish, but we're getting that live, and I wanted to call that out for you. So there goes Sentinel-6. Uh, that is a beautiful sight. Uh, watching it drift off there. Again, we are kind of shaded by the Earth, um, so we're not in direct sunlight at this time. Um, so that's why it's as dark as it is. Uh, if the sun were on this side of the Earth, we'd see a little bit more of that, but that's going to kind of just drift off, and that's completely normal and expected. Mm -hmm.